knowing how to forgive yourself for your past mistakes, for your previous sins, and knowing also how to repent and to flee from that which you know to be wrong for your spiritual growth and for the highest spiritual channels that you are attempting to attract into your life, it is a pertinent instinct in which you have to understand in order to distinguish the difference between self-sabotage and distinguishing the difference between whether or not you are holding yourself back or just not knowing how to be independent are two very different things. And so in this video, I want to talk about why after narcissistic abuse, you go into a form of self-sabotage for a while. At least you may think so that you're doing such a thing. But what it really is, is a rude awakening to your reality. Now, if you are someone that is not in the narcissistic relationship at this time, and you're in the healing process, this is the video for you. If you are just trying to get out of the relationship with the narcissist, it may take a minute to digest this video, and that's okay, but keep that in mind as we go forward. But the key takeaway from your leaving the narcissistic relationship is that it took so many different kinds of resources, so much time, so much energy, so much investment, emotional, spiritual, etc. All to realize that this person is never, ever, ever going to change. And if you continue to take the fall for them by people pleasing or just to you know hold the peace so to speak rather than seeing that that person sees you as a resentful object in itself do you recognize do you remember that look that they gave you in the eye when they looked at you and all that you saw in their eye was resentment and hate there was no excitement. There was no rejoice quality. There was no quality of joy. There was no quality of peace. There was only resentment and you being seen as a tool for their own transgressions. What I want to encourage you to do at this time is to stop holding yourself back. Now, a lot of the times it's going to be very hard to do this because you've been so caught up with the narcissistic relationship that when you finally leave the relationship and you actually are doing things again, it's almost like you look at yourself in a very different way once more. You look at yourself in a way where you think, well, maybe, maybe I don't know if I have what it takes to do these things. Maybe it's not really worth it to do these things. Maybe, maybe, maybe the narcissist was right. And you know, here's the craziest part about being with the narcissistic, well, with a narcissistic person for a longer period of time, is that your chemistry of your psychology will change indefinitely and it's going to be very challenging for you to maybe have a sense of touch a physical touch with people I know that was something that I struggled with for a while just considering my background and what I went through and what I had to go through I didn't like being touched because it made me uncomfortable for a while but in retrospect, the only reason that I didn't want to be touched was because usually whenever I was being like, and I'm not, I'm, I'm speaking like a touch on the shoulder or a hug or anything like that. 
you know, whenever there was that physical contact in my experience with narcissistic people in my life, there was usually some kind of backlash that came with it. And there was some kind of comment being made about my appearance or about whether or not I've gained weight or anything like that. And there's a lot of shaming involved as well. It's like, oh, you've lost muscle too. It's like, you know, this was just from the very beginning stages. And, you know, like at the time when I was a teenager, you know, it it did like have a lot of impact on me. But and those small little things can impact you over time, especially the the little hints and the little digs that they they do after they do certain things and they say certain things. But what you have to do is to continue to be an independent person and reclaim your identity. If you do not reclaim your identity, then the narcissist will win. But that's not going to happen here, not on this channel. A lot of the times you may find yourself struggling after the narcissistic relationship because you're replaying scenarios that happened and things that happened in your head. And you don't really know what's true anymore. You don't really know what's right. You don't really know which way is up and which way is down. You just know that you don't know how to forgive yourself for allowing these kinds of people to influence you in the way that they did. Like, why were you so naive? I know that was a question I asked myself. Why was I so naive? Why did I believe this person? Like the writing was on the wall from the day from day one. Why did I believe this person? Well, oftentimes it's because the people that experience narcissistic abuse later on generally have experienced it at other points in their life and they don't know it. And so oftentimes you're you're repeating a cycle in which you don't really know about. This could also be a generational curse. And for those that are not familiar with generational curses, a generational curse is a curse that's been passed down from each generation to your family. Now, what exactly is a generational curse? A generational curse can be more or less a position in which your family tree has chosen a particular route of sin time after time again. And I know, for example, for my family, it was wrath and it was greed and gluttony. And so when those perpetuate themselves each generation, it's almost like you fall deeper and deeper into the sin with each child that is being born in the next generation. And so to break those generational curses is going to be very, very challenging and very difficult. But if you are watching this video, then chances are you are on track to breaking these generational curses and to flee from that, which you know to be wrong for your well being. And you are also not stagnating anymore and i genu- i genuinely think the key will be to understand that all of the words of a narcissist are an illusion this is what's very difficult for a lot of people to understand especially post narcissistic relationship it's like the realization that it was all a lie is almost too much to handle in some instances and in some ways but what else are you going to do? You, you have to accept that. You have to accept that this was a shadow on the wall. You know, there's the famous allegory of the cave where the people in the background had the fire going and they would make shadows of like hand figures on the wall 
and tell the people that were chained to the wall that could only see the shadows on the wall that, yeah, you know, this is, this is a person, this is an elephant, this is this, this is that, this is a tree. But then one day when the man, one of the men that are in the cave is able to escape from the shackles and goes out of the cave and sees the sunlight for the first time and he's blinded by the light. Now, this is very indicative of the situation that you may be in right now if you are still in the narcissistic relationship. You might be so blinded by the light that it hurts your eyes. You might be so blinded by the truth that it, it's almost shocking and it's almost traumatic in, it, in itself. But no, no matter, the, the man goes back into the cave and he tries to tell everybody about the light outside. He's like, no, the trees are really out there. But the people that have been chained to the wall that have only seen the shadows on the wall, they still think that the shadows are the only thing that's real. So what's the moral of the story? Well, you don't really know what you don't know. And it's not until you actually make a change that you actually see the change. If you never make a change, if you stay shackled to the, to the, to, to in the cave and you're going to just look at the shadows on the wall, you're never going to make it anywhere that you really want to be. So you must make changes. You must make strives. You must make and continue to strive toward a better life. And I guarantee you that that better life does not involve the narcissist. The narcissistic person will do everything they can to make sure that you subtly feel shame in their presence all the time. And even the small little digs, it's like the energy behind it is what's really important because they get a thrill off making you feel as though you're worthless. The narcissist gets a thrill and a satisfaction, a pleasure from seeing you struggle with your identity and your, your reality. When you are a genuine person and you're being gaslighted and you question your reality in front of the narcissist, ooh, that's like Christmas to the narcissist. They, they love that. And so this is something that you're going to have to recognize and deal with so that you can stop the self-sabotage. Because all of this with the narcissist is a rude awakening. I know it was for me. It was it was a genuine shock. And I think one way that I could describe it, it was a shock of pure astonishment at the illusions that they were able to unfold before me for so long. But they wouldn't be able to keep it up. They're not able to keep it up. Narcissists cannot keep these things up. They can't keep up their image for too long. That's why they have to go from person to person to person, like the emotional vampires that they are. Because if somebody actually caught on to the narcissist and somebody actually exposes the narcissist, well, then they can't get their supply. Now, what do I mean by that? Narcissists thrive off of your energy. They take your life force because you're the one that has life. You're the one that's spiritually alive, at least striving to be. They are spiritually dead. And so do not continue to take a fall and try to keep the peace with these people that only want to take away the peace of mind that you have. And with that being said, I hope this message was useful and insightful. And if you're interested in a consultation, please send me an email in the link below. With that being said, peace be with you. Till next time.